So in all of these scenarios, I was giving you information about the velocity, and then we were making conclusions about uh, distance traveled, displacement, which are all talking about position. Okay, and we know that the relationship between position and velocity is velocity is the derivative of position. So, we found that the areas under the curves, or another way of saying that is the area between the curve and the x-axis, equated to an amount, in this case, a distance traveled. Um, so, the main relationship that you should uh, kind of get the idea of is that the, um, wait, hang on, we're not, we're not there yet, okay. There is a relationship between the area under the curve and amount, total amount. In this case, distance, displacement. Um, just so you know, displacement, think about it in, the, in these terms. Displacement is your position relative to where you started. Okay? Your displacement is your position relative to where you started. Your total distance traveled is just how much ground you covered. Think about steps. Okay, I can take five steps forward and five steps back, my displacement is zero, but I took 10 total steps. So um, keep those straight in your mind. Now, what if we made this a little bit more complicated? The velocities that I gave you um, there, all of them uh, had linear equations, so to speak, or they were straight lines, so we could easily calculate the area of the curve. Well, what about there were some curves in there? Now, these Three pieces in the middle, three pieces, three pieces, four pieces, four pieces, those are easy. Because we can look at the rectangle or a triangle and another triangle. Um, but these other three pieces, the one at the beginning and two at the end, have a curve to them. And they're not circles. They're not something that we can just use a geometric formula to calculate the area. So we're going to look at um, how we can calculate those. And if I was to ask you, well, what could we maybe sort of approximate that first shape to be here on this graphic? You want a triangle? We could put a triangle on there. Is there anything that might give us a little bit better of an approximation? A trapezoid? Okay, a trapezoid would probably fit that just a little bit better because we could kind of draw this slant right here instead of having to go from corner to corner and get cut it off. We can get a little bit closer to that exact uh, area. All right. So we're actually going to use um, some of those to approximate the area under a curve. So here is our first curve. We've got the function negative x squared plus 5. It is bound by x equals 0. So that's just saying that um, the y-axis is the left side. Um, that's where we're cutting it off. We're not going anywhere to the left of x equals 0. And x equals 2 is our other cutoff. Okay? So we're not concerned about this little piece right here. We're just looking at between 0 and 2, what is the area under this curve? Now, we are going to approximate it. They tell us how to do it using four equal left-handed triangles. All right? So let's think, first of all, if we're going from 0 to 2, and we want to split it into four equal pieces, where do we, how, how wide do these need to be? Aha, right, we're covering two units, and we want to do it in four pieces. So every half unit, we're going to cut this off. Now, when it says left-handed triangle, this is what you do. You start on the left side of your interval, so at x equals 0, you're going to go up to the curve to its y value, and you are going to go straight across until you get to the beginning of your next interval. So our next interval starts at 0.5. So that is the top of our first rectangle. Okay, so there's our first rectangle. Then at 0.5, we go up to the curve, find its y value, and we go straight across to the beginning of our next interval at 1. There's our second rectangle. 
at 1, we go up to the curve, find its y value, go straight across to 1.5. There's our third rectangle. And then we go up to 1.5 on the curve, straight across, and down. There's our fourth rectangle. So this is obviously going to create an over estimation or over approximation of this area because our rectangles extend above the curve but we can't make it fit perfectly so we're just going to go with it. It is an approximation. They didn't say get it exactly. They just said approximate. So area of a rectangle we've got uh, the based on the height. Now it doesn't matter which way you look at it. In this case I would say I would look at all my bases as one half my first height is 5, so my first rectangle has an area of 5 halves units. My second interval has a width of 1 half. Its height, well, uh, it looks like 4.75, but I have the function, so might as well check it. 1 half, uh, let's see here, this would be negative 1 half squared plus 5, which is... Uh, one half squared is one fourth, so negative one fourth plus twenty over four. So that gives me nineteen over eight for my area. Okay, negative one fourth plus twenty over four is nineteen over four times one half is nineteen over eight. Okay. My next piece, one half times uh, four. That one's easy because one lands on four right there. So its area is two. And my last piece, unfortunately, 1.5 is not a nice whole number. So I got to square three halves. So that's negative nine over four. And obviously you have your calculators, but um, sometimes these are calculator inactive. I'm doing it as much as I can without a calculator. Uh, we got to add all those up. Okay, those are just the individual areas. So we've got to add 5 halves plus, I'm going to go ahead and put my over 8s together, 30 over 8 plus 2, and let's see here, 30 over 8, I can reduce to 15 over 4. That makes it a little bit nicer. So 10 over 4 plus 15 over 4 plus 8 over 4 gives us an area of 25, 33 over 4 for our total area. Lots of practice with those fractions. Um, now, do you notice anything that may have made my calculations a little bit easier at all? Do these four expressions have something in common? We're multiplying them all by one half, and then we're adding them together. So technically, we could have kind of factored out that one half. We've done one half times all the heights added together. Why does it smell like gas? Like Car gas. That's awful. Okay. Anyways. Whew. Um. Yeah, like gasoline. Do you not smell it? It must be coming through, through these windows then because it is strong. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, okay, we already mentioned a second ago that if we use trapezoids, that would um, be closer to that shape. Besides changing the shape, is there something that we could 
do to these rectangles to make this a better approximation? Is there some way that we could cut down on this excess? Okay, besides changing the shape, besides changing the shape, how can we maybe cut down on this excess? Make the ranges smaller. What if we had more rectangles? Try and visualize that for a second. Instead of going from 0 to 1 half, what if we just went from 0 to 0 0.25? And then we take those point two five. That would cut down on that excess there. Um, so obviously we were told to use four left-handed rectangles, but you're right. If we make those intervals smaller, then you're going to get a better approximation. Okay, uh, let's do the exact same curve, but we're going to use right-handed rectangles. Let me show you how the right-handed ones work. So that means we're going to start on the right side of our interval. So we're going to start at 2, and we're going to go straight across to the left. That's our first rectangle. Okay, so at 1.5, we're going to go up to the curve, find its y value, and go to the left. Do the same thing at 1. We're going to go up to the curve, find the y value, go to the left, 0.5, find its y value, go to the left. Okay. So we're going to be using some of the same values. Um, so let me, uh, that was 19 over 4, that was 4, that was... 11 over 4. Okay, I just went back and got my fractional y value so I didn't have to do all that work all over again. Okay, so let's find these areas. Um, the, I'm going to do it the way I mentioned. They all have a width of 1 half. So when I add up all the areas, really I can take out that 1 half and I'm just going to add up their heights. So I have a height of 19 over 4. We have a height of 4, we have a height of 11 over 4, and we have a height of 1. So, let's see here, that gives us 30 over 4, which is 15 over 2, plus 5, so that's 10 over 2. So we get 25 over Four for our approximation, and it would probably be helpful. That's what six point two five. Yeah, six point two five. The decimal for our other one four would be eight point two five. Okay, so we have a swing of two entire units here from our left-handed rectangle approximation to our right-handed rectangle approximation. So the left-handed one was an over approximation. This right-handed one, you can tell, is an under-approximation because we're missing these areas right here. Um, so the actual area, we can assume, is somewhere between 8.25 and 6.25. Probably not right in the middle, but it's somewhere in between there. So the actual area, um, right at the start. Okay. All right. Um, we need to talk about a little bit of terminology because on the exam, sometimes they do refer to them as left-handed and right-handed rectangles, uh, but sometimes they call them inscribed and circumscribed. Okay, inscribed and circumscribed. So this is, um, you just have to be careful. An inscribed angle or rectangle, inscribed in lies under the curve, and so the sum of the areas of the inscribed rectangles is a lower sum, we call it a lower sum. So in this case, the inscribed rectangles would have been the right-handed rectangles. But it depends on the concavity of your curve, which one is which. 